Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start talking about chemical equations. We see all the binary um, up there. Hopefully we've figured out what that means by now. Um, the quote that we have is that everyone is in a hurry to be the one, but no one wants to be the zero that adds value to the one. So this is just an introduction into chemical equations, uh, how to write them, and everything else. So what we're trying to learn uh, students will understand the role of products and reactants in a chemical reaction uh, basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to know what products are know what reactants are how to find them in an equation um, and how they function in a chemical reaction uh, number two students will use chemical symbols to express chemical reactions so not only are we going to use the symbols from the periodic table to express our chemical formulas but there's other chemi chemical symbols that we're going to learn um, that are used specifically in chemical equations uh, number three students will be able to write word equations from descriptions of chemical reactions so basically what that is is we're taking a paragraph or a description of a whole reaction and breaking it down into a word equation and then number four is students will be able to write chemical equations from word equations so after we take it from the paragraph into the word equation we then will be able to take it from the word equation into the actual chemical equation that we use now from the lab we said you know we have all we went from binary to Spanish to English okay why all the work well, it's to show us and represent what actually happens when we write a chemical equation. Now, in chemical reactions, usually what we get is we get an overwhelming number of variables. There's a lot of things going on. And when we describe a chemical reaction, like in a paragraph, it takes up a lot of space. Okay, what chemical reactions and chemical equations what they do, uh, those equations help us organize information and quantify information. So basically it makes everything nice and neat uh, so we can see what's going on in the chemical reaction on a piece of paper. So the pieces of the puzzle. So there's a lot of different pieces that go in to make a chemical equation. Um, so the, one of the first ones that we have um, are reactants. Now what reactants are, they're the original pieces of the puzzle. So that's what we start with. Okay, It's what we start with, it's what we have in the beginning. The product, those guys are the finished product. It's what we have left over after the reaction takes place. Okay, And then we also have catalysts and inhibitors. Um, it's the number of people working on the puzzle basically. Um, it can speed up or inhibit a reaction, so speed it up or slow it down. Uh, they're not really involved in the actual products or reactants. They just have a lot to do with just the speed of it. Now, other pieces of the puzzle are the symbols. Now, and this is basically like we're trying to find the corners and the straight edges when we're actually putting a real puzzle together. Uh, the symbols in the chemical equation are not just for the elements. So it's not just in the chemical formulas that we find on the periodic table. We need to know all of these. Um, and these are great uh, basic level questions, definition type questions. Um, anytime we see an arrow, uh, we know that it means yields or produces. Uh, when we see a single arrow like we'd have right here, that means that the reaction uh, only goes one way, okay? that it only goes forward, it cannot reverse. And then when we see the double arrow here, that would be a reversible reaction. So the reaction go forward and then it can reverse itself and go back. So the reactants will produce products and then those products themselves can then become reactants and go back. Um, and this is what is usually in the middle. It separates out um, our products and our reactants. Um, so anything after a chemical formula, um, so say that we have iron, Fe, and if we see an S by it, that would be solid iron. Um, if we saw, instead of an S, we saw an L, that means that we would have liquid iron. If we didn't see an L and we saw a G, that means we have gaseous iron. And if we didn't see a G and we saw this, and we've probably seen this before, a Q, that means aqueous. And really good definition, I'd probably write it down here. Aqueous, all it means is that it's dissolved in water. 
Uh, so we take something like salt, say sodium chloride, and we put it in water. We say that it dissociates or becomes aqueous. Um, it's just dissolved in water. So it's a solution then. Okay. Above the arrow. So if we see a triangle above the arrow, like we see right here, that means that heat was added to the reaction. Okay, so heat was necessary for the reaction to take place. Or if we see a catalyst, like here we see that we have potassium iodide, okay, I. If we see this uh, above the arrow, then that means that that's the catalyst in the reaction. And then anything in front of the chemical formula, so say we had our Fe right here, say we had the number two in front of it, we call those coefficients, and those are going to represent our mole ratios, and we'll talk a lot about that in the next unit. Okay, other pieces of the puzzle, we have to have evidence. Okay, evidence of a chemical uh, reaction can actually be taken place. So it's one or more of the following. Um, so if we see heat or light, um, we see formation of gas bubbles, formation of precipitate. Um, I would just kind of make a note right there. A precipitate, all it is, is just means that there's a solid that forms. You start to see a solid form in a solution that there wasn't a solid before. And then we see color change. Um, normally you need to see more than one of these, uh, something greater than one of those pieces of evidence to make sure that a chemical reaction has taken place. So our first step, word equations. Now word equations, basically what they are, they're taking the big paragraph and they're breaking it down into manageable chunks. Um, basically you can think of it as taking that big huge long binary code and breaking it down to Spanish. It's not what we're going to actually use in the end but it breaks it down into something manageable in instead of all those ones and zeros. So this right here would represent a word equation. We see that we have hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas produces dihydrogen monoxide liquid. So basically this is the combustion of hydrogen and what happens is when you combust hydrogen you produce water. And you can see it down here, um, written here and written here. Uh, basically it's just showing us what's actually happening. Uh, main difference between these two, and this I'll mention here again, I'll probably mention it a lot, are diatomics. We see that we this was H and O and this went to H2O2 because we can't forget our diatomics. Um, when those elements exist by themselves and they always exist paired to one of themselves. So let's look at an example. It says a scientist takes a piece of magnesium metal and heats it in a Bunsen burner. The strip of magnesium metal produces large amounts of light. So we see that there's light. After the light is produced, the Bunsen burner is turned off. The magnesium continues to produce light until the metal is completely gone, leaving behind a very white powder. Write the possible word equation based on the reaction. So we're writing the word equation. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take out the pieces. So we see that magnesium, we have that, it's just a strip of magnesium. So we would just write magnesium okay and that's the first thing that we have in the reaction. Okay, Now it's magnesium and it was heated with the Bunsen burner, so we see that that's happening. So now what we see is that what is it reacting with? Well, it's burning. Okay, you can think of it as burning. So it's reacting with the oxygen in the air. So plus oxygen. Okay, and produces this very white powder. So basically, what happens is we see that the magnesium and the oxygen, they're bonding. They're bonding together, and so basically it produces a compound, something completely different than magnesium and completely different than oxygen, which would be our magnesium oxide. So we would just write and magnesium bonded to oxygen. And we get this very manageable. Now, the magnesium metal, um, since it was, we can put that it's a solid. The oxygen was a gas, and it produced a magnesium oxide, which was a solid. It was a powder. And heat was added in the reaction, so it would take place. Next example, it says pure distilled water and potassium hydroxide. 
the catalyst are placed in a beaker with a positive and negative wire. The wire is connected in an electrical source and gas forms on the end of the wire. Okay. Write the possible word equations for this scenario. So when we're looking at this one, what we have is we have our pure distilled water and we see that the wire is connected to electrical source and gas forms so it's pure water the potassium hydroxide is just going to be a catalyst so what's in water well we see we have pure distilled water so it would just be water okay and what water is is just it's dihydrogen monoxide but we'll just write water okay and our electrical current is added to it and it produces gas on both electrodes so what is what is water made of well hydrogen and oxygen so we would just have hydrogen plus our oxygen okay and those are gas so we put gas there for both of those and water's a liquid so we could just put an L for that and that would be our word equation. Now let's move from the word equations into the actual chemical equations. Now what the difference between word equations and the actual chemical equations is the chemical equation includes the quantitative as well as the qualitative information. Okay? All chemical equations must have the same number and types of molecules on each side of the arrow. So we see our word equation that we have here where it's hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas produces dihydrogen monoxide and then we see the actual chemical equation below it. Now the main thing that I'll caution you here, the main thing that usually people mess up with in going from the word equation to the actual chemical equation is that you have to write the chemical formula correctly. And this comes back to what we learned last semester on how to write chemical formulas. So we have to be able to do that right to be able to transfer it from the word equation to the chemical equation. So we'll look at this. Here's our word equation. We have solid magnesium plus oxygen gas. Um, we see that it produces magnesium oxide. So in writing the actual chemical equation, um, all we have to do is for our elements, we write them down. We put magnesium and we put oxygen. Now any time you write magnesium or you write magnesium and oxygen those are single elements they're not bonded to anything else. Any time you write single elements you have to check is it a diatomic and remember we remember those on the periodic table by Brinkelhoff remember that they're bromine C L H O F. So Brinkelhoff. Any time you write any one of these by themselves, they're diatomic, so they have to exist bonded to itself. So we check: is magnesium a part of this Brinkelhoff? In which Brinkelhoff, all it is is bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Okay, is it a part of that? No, it's not. So it's just written as magnesium. Oxygen is oxygen a part of Brinkelhoff? Well, yes, it is. It's right here. So instead of writing just an O we have to put O2 okay now these are gases so we put a G representing gas or sorry magnesium is a solid so we put our S there and then oxygen is a gas and then it makes magnesium oxide now this is a compound okay we'll move our little Brinkelhoff down here now magnesium oxide is going to be a compound now we have to write the correct chemical formula so magnesium oxide it is a ionic compound and it exists of magnesium bonded to oxygen now remember when we're writing ionic compound formulas we always have to crisscross so we look on the periodic table and we see that magnesium has a plus two oxidation number and oxygen's minus two so we go ahead and crisscross, bring those guys down. Remember the positive and negatives to cancel out. So we get a two and a two. And since they can be reduced, that two and a two, they have a two to two ratio, which is the same as a one to one ratio. So we just get MgO. Okay, and we said earlier that would be a solid because it was that white powder. 
Let's look at our next one. So we have liquid dihydrogen monoxide, that's that water. Um, we have hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas. So let's go ahead and write this, liquid dihydrogen monoxide. It is a covalent compound. So di means two, so we would go H2. Monoxide means one oxygen. There we go, it's a liquid. So we put an L there and it produces our hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So we put hydrogen plus our oxygen. Okay. When we write this, we have to represent it. Um, is it a part of Brinkelhoff? Look back at this example. Yes, they both are. There's the H, there's the O. So instead of just writing H and O, we have to put H2 and O2. And we would get this as our final chemical equation. Get it where you can see it. And that would be our final chemical equation for that from that word equation.